welcome everyone to the inaugural episode uh, session. I don't know what we're gonna call it. Uh, podcast. Oh, probably mystery mystery box podcast. Um, episode one. Episode <coughs> zero one. Season one. Year one. This is going great so far. <laughs> uh, uh, my name is James. My name is Mark. Yes. And uh, we're this is a podcast. Where we're going to talk about video games and movies and anime and probably primarily video games. <laughs> we'll see. Um, this episode is probably going to be mostly video games. Um, so yeah, really just discussion. Mm. Uh, we can. Uh, th- today is the third day of E3 week. Oh yeah, I should probably say it is fifteenth of June, <laughs> twenty sixteen. Um, as of recording, so. as of recording, I don't know when this will go up, but <laughs> it's probably just dated this episode. Probably sometime next year, so this is very vital information. All right, um, it's kind of like a time capsule. <laughs> you can look back and be like, oh yeah. If you can find it, we're burying it in my backyard. Yeah, good. We're gonna put the t- we're gonna put um, latitude and longitude, <laughs> and uh, do some geotagging, and uh, maybe you'll find it. So well. A whole Nicolas Cage set of traps and, <laughs> and clues. It's a national treasure, this one. All right. Yeah. So, so, we didn't watch Microsoft, so should we at least attempt to talk about Microsoft? Oh, yeah. By the way, we're going to talk about E3. <laughs> we're just going to go ahead and start talking about E3 now. Yeah. Because it, we've been dying to. I think we're a bit biased because we are uh, we only really watched the Sony and Nintendo yeah. presentations. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't I, really keep an eye out for what happened to Microsoft. Well, they uh, they're making a smaller Xbox. <laughs> That's all I really know. What a strange name! Now it's, it's Xbox Xbox One S, Xbox Ones, Xbox One X Bones. It's X Bones. <laughs> oh my God! I didn't think of that. It's the X Bones now. <laughs> no bones about it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. Um, Let's see. All right. So the only thing I think I remember from Microsoft, just as a weird, uh, sad little attempt to try to let's go ahead and get this talk out. about Microsoft get is this uh, out of the way. New um, Dead Rising, Dead Rising Four, which they're already ready for Christmas because it takes place during Christmas. I think it takes place. I think it might be a remake of the first one. Uh, I I watched a video where they had uh, an interview. Uh, it was. It's actually taking place in the same town that the first one took place in, so it's not oh. a reboot. Okay. It's a sequel. And um, this is gonna be like, if you're gonna remake it, don't call it four. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that makes more sense. Yeah, and it just takes place in the same place. Uh, it's just as silly as all of them. This one, yeah. I saw some gameplay where there was a mech suit. Okay. Yeah, and and just available. It's in just li- It is literally just lying around on the street. And, uh, no one else is using it. No, it might as well. Grab it. <laughs> wear it. Put it on. Um, and with, it just enhances your strength, really. You don't really use You can punch with it, but that you can only get as many as you can punch. You can punch a car and, <laughs> and send Good. it down the street, and it's actually uh, amazing looking. <laughs> um, that looks very satisfying to do, is just punch a car and then ram it down a giant street full of zombies. Um, is that Xbox exclusive? Yes, unfortunately. All right, well, I don't care that anymore. Is, that would have been the only game I would have uh, wanted to play from the Microsoft um, showing. I can't think of any others. Did you see any? Nope. No. <laughs> I mean, I had... Yeah, we're very really biased. no interest in Microsoft. I don't own an Xbox. Exactly. And there's nothing on there really interesting. Um, so let's get to <laughs> the Sony's conference. Yeah, all right. So we should start at the beginning, I guess. Uh, they opened with Gregorian chanting... Oh yeah, very ominous. <laughs> um, very confu- confusing. For a little while, I thought I was watching the wrong show. <laughs> was I watching something that's just actual theater or what? It seemed uh, like uh, shockingly out of place. Right. <laughs> and then someone in chat was like, "Oh, it's God of War music." It's like, "Oh, okay." And then they showed new God of War. Okay, yeah, I've never played a God of War game, but. Um, I like this trailer. It was not what I was expecting from the uh, crazy, violent God of War series. 
uh, an emotional trailer about a father and son. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody was expecting this. No. Like, anybody who had... Even if information was, like, leaked, like, oh, God of War is coming, no one would have known that... I mean, it was leaked that there's a new God of War. Oh, was it's it? just They're just... I don't... I think it was just leaked. There's a new God of War, and it's Norse mythology. Oh, it's right. Like, I think it's... <sighs> The entirety of it. Yeah. And Meg- Mega64 put up a video where uh, yeah. Kratos goes after other religions. <laughs> and it's just like he eventually starts fighting Christianity and has to fight Jesus. And other mythologies. <laughs> and-, <laughs> and Barney. <laughs> Barney. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Barney's just there. Barney's um, there. He will fight him regardless. <laughs> he does not care. Yeah. Um, I think that's all we knew from the leak. Mm-hmm. And um, the trailer, he has a beard. He's a dad of war now. Dad of war. He has visually aged a lot. He's training his <laughs> son, maybe, I guess? Uh, I, I don't know. Cause like, I don't think it says anywhere that it's his son. Yeah, probably not his son. He, he says, a, your mother. A child. Yeah, he said, at the beginning, he's like, your mother's knife. Your mother taught you to hunt, did she? Your mother. Your mother. So, yeah, he and then the boy calls him uh, father, dad. Oh, he does? Yeah, he, he calls him during, like, the later ha- half of it. Okay. Um, I don't, I probably don't think that that's actually his son, but he's probably raising him. I think something happened to the mother, because at the beginning he says, your mother's knife is yours now. Well, a spoiler alert, I'm pretty sure the end of God of War 3, he dies. Yeah, so that's one of the bigger confusing things. So people are thinking maybe it's, well, it couldn't be a prequel, (laughs) or I don't think it's a reboot. But maybe, I don't know, maybe he is dead, and this is in Valhalla. <laughs> yeah, I was just about... I That's was, the only thing I, I can think of. I just thought that, is that, like, uh, he died at the end of 3, and then, uh, turns out Greek mythology is all bullshit. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Norse mythology is real, and now you're in Valhalla. Yeah. We tricked you. <laughs> it's actually Norse... Well, this is someone who's never played the game. <laughs> so I'm just, just guessing. I don't know. Um... Oh yeah, and then the gameplay um, is like third person behind the shoulder, mm-hmm. kind of like Last of Us, not like God of War. Not at all. What <laughs> we're used to, which is cool, because uh, they're they're changing things. Yeah, which is cool. I commend them. I commend you. <laughs> um, this very much felt like uh, a Last of Us game because the like the over shoulder camera and as the. the the first thing I thought of. Yeah, and you have a, com- a child companion who, uh, who oh, helps yeah. you and there's, stuff like that. There's a bow. It shoots you in your one piece of armor. That's the only thing that's covering you is your, your left shoulder. Oh, Very what a lucky. coincidence. So many exposed vital organs, and he hits the one piece of leather that he's wearing on his shoulder. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, and um, the combat, yeah, like you mentioned, the combat's not even close to what it used to be. It's cool though. Yeah, it's mm. I like it, like it, I like it a lot. Um, I thought it was funny because I showed it to my friend Frank, who had uh, played all three God of War games. Oh yeah, and he doesn't like it. <laughs> oh really? Because he's because it's, it's different. Not, it's so different. I love it because I love The Last of Us. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know if I'll. Uh, I'll I think it's a good starting point. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. I mean, I've never played him. This one looks kind of cool. <laughs> uh, can't wait for. The last of the God of War of us. What did we call it? Official uh, title. <laughs> uh, official title is uh, God TBD. of Emotions. God of Emotions. <laughs> God of Emotions. Or Dad of War. <laughs> Dad of War. Um, we've talked about God of War a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, like, why not? We, what was the What was the next game they showed? Next, I think. Was it Horizon? It was Days Gone, the most forgettable uh, thing ever. Yeah, I don't care about that game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like the most. It's so forgettable. It's the most, like, boring-looking 40-year-old white guy <laughs> protagonist. Starring a whispery a whispery uh, biker. Whis- Whisper Jones here <laughs> and his gun yeah. on his back. And uh, zombies, which, that that's an original concept I yeah. haven't seen before. Zombies in a video game. I think <laughs> it's going to be a pretty revolutionary title. It's going gonna, it's gonna to change some things. Uh, what exactly is a zombie? I don't. I don't know. I'll find out when I play yeah. this. I have to play this. I'm game. gonna get Days Gone Day One because I need to know what a zombie <laughs> is. Days Gone Day One Edition. <coughs> Days Gone Edition. Day One. 
Only on Xbox Ones. Okay, so I we were texting each other whenever we were watching it. We were watching it live, uh, and I immediately thought that this was a, a, the Last of Us sequel. Oh yeah, because it looks like a game that already exists. It looks just like the Last of Us, like the whole overgrowth and like the uh, apocalypse, obviously, and like the downed airplanes and the overgrowth yeah. and stuff like that. But other than like once all of that was gone, it was obvious that it wasn't. A Last of Us game because he's on his motorcycle, <laughs> and uh, it lacks any like real like. It really did try to like connect like human with someone, have a human connection, but it, it didn't have as much as The Last of Us. I feel it didn't connect with me. Connect with I don't know someone. Probably. So when I rewatched that trailer, <laughs> like tried to find something about it, it yeah. I think that it's probably going to be just as good as The Last of Us. Probably now. Well, Whether or not I'll like it as much is probably different, but I think it's the trailer that really makes us feel so forgettable about it. Oh, uh, did you see the gameplay? The gameplay is kind of forgettable too. All the zombies uh, wear uh, blue jeans. <laughs> is that that's like a very every, important point? Every zombie is shirtless and is wearing blue jeans. So yeah, I have a theory. Okay, it's the jeans. It's not like with a G <laughs> with a J. It's zombie jeans. <laughs> The whole game's a pun. Anyway. It's all in the jeans. <laughs> Everybody who just wore a certain shipment of uh, Old Navy jeans just turned into a zombie. <laughs> Levi's. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. The gameplay. That's that's the only thing. That's the big thing I noticed. They're all wearing jeans. Weird. <laughs> you texted that to me, and I was like, "Oh, what's your point?" Everybody's wearing his jeans, but uh, I rewatched it again. Everyone yeah. is wearing blue jeans. <laughs> The bluest of jeans. Yeah, I um, don't know. I'm not gonna get that game. I, I so I was obviously the comparisons with The Last of Us is a game I, I liked a lot. I've mentioned The Last of Us I think probably ten times already. Well, that was a that was a good game. So I I mentioned the trailer makes it seem really boring and forgettable. Yeah. It's because this trailer starts off with a whispery biker. I remember when. Yeah. I remember when. Blah blah blah. I remember that. I remember that. But I don't give a damn. I remember my wife. I remember my wife running on my hog. <laughs> That's the lamest That's trailer so lame. ever. He like this. The protagonist. That's probably the the biggest problem I have with it. Is the protagonist. I don't relate to him. No, not at all. He seems like the kind of customer that would show up in my store, and I would just. I don't. Know, I wouldn't hey. like him. <laughs> That's gonna be eight ninety five. I remember when it used to cost a dollar. Um, so I re I was in I was curious on why that was such a problem. So I rewatched the Last of Us reveal trailer back yeah. in the two thousand two thousand and twelve eleven. I think fourteen. No, no, two thousand and twelve. Oh. Jesus, fourteen's so recent. Um, fourteen is that one? I think that's when it came out. Maybe. It was revealed like I think two or three years before it came out. We can look this up, but I'm not. Gonna. <laughs> We're not. We don't need a fact. We don't do it. research on this no. podcast. This is a uh, gotta keep it fast and loose. Just keep going. No bones about it. <laughs> That's our slogan. Right. Kind of put it on our shirt. Um, Mystery box podcast. No bones about it. <laughs> um, so yeah. So the I rewatched the Last of Us trailer. The reveal trailer. It's it's entirely different. This is the right way to do this post apocalyptic emotional trailer where it's just like things are happening and it's and like you have to put it together it gives you like the pieces it's like here's yeah. a girl what's she doing what's she running from oh there's something o happening over there uh who's that dude are they cool oh they just okay they're i guess they're cool um you cool there are like only two spoken lines and it's at the very end of the trailer i like and that. it's ellie who says joel used to tell me that it used to not be like this it must have been nice good if you can uh, can convey stuff without vocals uh, there's a trailer we'll talk about later I'm sure <laughs> um, but what's what is, uh, I don't want to talk about this game anymore <laughs> uh, I probably shouldn't be judging it having not played it but I don't I don't care. Well, there's not much not too much to judge it on right now anyway so yeah but might as well give first impressions this is my first impressions I don't like it. <laughs> what's the what's the next thing they show? <laughs> next I think game. it was Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, yes, Horizon Zero Dawn. Now that game 
looks good. Yeah, it looks really interesting. Um, another game that takes place in the distant future, uh, where um, there's a one line that she says, one of the thousands, because Al- Alloy talks a lot during <laughs> gameplay. She has a quip, oh yeah, she has a quip about everything. The main character. Mm-hmm. That's one thing I noticed. She talks to herself a lot, which. I don't know if that'll be annoying or not, or if that's just for the trailer. Um, that's just one thing I noticed. She has a comment for every arrow that she shoots. Whoa! <laughs> Such depth to a character. So many lines. Whoa, I tripped there. I feel like I connect, con- con- connected this woman. Oh yeah, I've tripped before. I've been there. I get her. I remember when. I'm tired of, uh... I'm a little sick of every protagonist having a bow and arrow. <laughs> Yeah. She's got one. Uh, boy they have one does. In, they have one in... Boy. God of War's boy does. Dad of War. Yeah. My son. Uh, the new Zelda game. Yep. But, I mean, that's a Zelda staple. I mean, you're gonna let that go. <laughs> I mean, that's been... Yeah, it's been established since the beginning. For 30 years. Yeah. That's so, like it's, they, got a, they got a grandfather clause on that one. Um, I, I think since, again, The Last of Us, bow, bows and arrows have gotten popular yeah. again. Yeah, I think it was... Far Cry 3 was the first one. It had a combat, uh, a compact bow. And ever since then, every single game of that generation had bows and arrows. Let's see, there was... Last of Us is really... Minimalistic. They, you we're, get the, we're talking about Last... Welcome to The Last of Us cast, where yes. we talk about Last of Us and no other game. Yeah, just The Last of Us. Um, That game had bows, and then I feel like... Uh, I, well, I didn't know about Far Cry, but I, I feel like every game after Last of Us had to have a bow. Mm-hmm. A lot of games had to have, like... Some child companion. Um, there were so many that came after that, and none of them were really good. Bioshock Infinite actually came before it, which had Ellie. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was. Oh yeah, that was before. Okay. Yeah. So they, they were like one after the other. Cause Bioshock Infinite came out, and it had a companion character that you didn't have to take care of. You didn't have to baby her or escort her. She actually helped you. She was integral, <laughs> and um, and uh, she was really. Uh, good pathfinding, I guess. Like she never like. Oh no, that's not true. Because she jumped out in front of enemies, and <laughs> luckily the enemies don't see her. And, and uh, Ellie does the same thing. Are they both named Ellie? It's Elizabeth and Ellie. <laughs> Elizabeth from Bioshock and Ellie from The Last of Us. Okay. They both very have, similar. Yes, yeah, very similar and similar uh, functionality. They're both companions that follow you and they they help you. They're integral and you don't have to baby them. Um, yeah, a lot of games had. Partners, mm-hmm. and then last year um, was the year of uh, dogs, where every game you had oh, a, yeah. a dog companion. Even um, Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid Five, Fallout. Yep. The new Zelda game, actually. If you use the <laughs> if you use the Wolf Link amiibo, you can get a little wolf. Um, we'll talk about that later. And an enslaved Link, where he's just an enslaved dog who's <laughs> trapped in wolf form. He's hey, now your buddy. He can't. Um, he doesn't have the Twilight Shard or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Twilight Princess is a good game. Speaking of trends, uh, I think PT ruined every horror game oh, from yeah. now on. Okay. Um, I think they showed Resident Evil next. Uh, or pretty, pretty close to yeah. next. It was um, yeah. That trailer started, and the first thing I thought was, eh, it's, it's PT. First. Yep. Um, it's not though, but um, it's like first person, and it has that same like atmosphere and feeling as PT. Mm-hmm. And I really did not like watching that trailer. <laughs> like I had to turn the volume down, and like I'm such a baby. <laughs> I hate um, first person horror games because that's a little bit. You can just turn around and anything could be behind you. Yeah, absolutely. Where third person, you have the camera. You can always look. You can always. Well, you usually know what's around you. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and then uh, you see like a few scenes and um, like there's a guy in a wheelchair mm-hmm. and like that's what kind of set me off. Like that's really Resident evil Yep. And then the logo came out, which by the way, that is a sick logo <laughs> um, <laughs> where they have the Roman numerals. Mm-hmm. For, uh, is it seven? Yeah. yeah. Seven. And uh, it's a VR game, which yeah. I don't know if you can play it without VR. I don't see why not. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a game I would not be able to play. 
I would not be able to handle a virtual reality horror game. No, I can barely handle it without it. Yeah. <laughs> Just normal. <laughs> um, but I'm glad they're doing something new because the last Resident Evil 6 is not... This is a Michael Bay film. Michael Bay film. <laughs> and then 5, I played 5 and that was, that was alright. That was the one that took place in Africa. I think so. That's the one that took I played place. it at a friend's house, I should say. Yeah. So I didn't play the full game. Mm-hmm. Um, that was kind of fun. But uh, the the logo <laughs> on really something. Like so, logo. Did you see the the Japanese one? No, I haven't. Well, in Japan, it's called Biohazard, and so the it's number seven is in the the letter Z. Huh. Good logos. Yeah. It's um, cool that they got it to work in, in both countries. That's my yeah. That's my uh, my uh. That's the the wasn't thing the, that stood out to me was the logo. Wasn't the first uh, Resident Evil code name uh, Biohazard or something like that? Or am I thinking well, it's it's just else? called Biohazard in Japan? It's always been bi- oh, called okay. that, and I don't know why they changed it. I think maybe there was something else already called Biohazard. I think so. Because that's what they did with Star Fox <clears throat> in Europe. It's called like Star Wing. Hmm. I think it might still be called that because there was another game only in Europe called Star Fox. Wow. Or like the Atari. Wow. Yeah. That's a really unique name. It's, it's I know. <laughs> surprising that it was already taken. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, see. Yeah, reason? I think... Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying, game looks cool. Won't won't play it. Probably not. Mm, too scared. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably will watch somebody else uh, yeah. play it. Um, I think, going back to what I, the trends, and I think uh, PT really set the bar for open a door going to the same room well I think because so many uh, so many horror games after that have done that I mean it's become annoying I think part of it was just cause it got cancelled so every yeah. developer was like ooh <laughs> let's jump on that <laughs> let's continue where they left off this game's not coming out we can just make our own <laughs> but I don't know benefit off of somebody else's uh, tragedy PT is a legitimate scary game yeah, that, like that, that game is ner- a nerve-wracking game. That's another game where I just watched someone play, and I was scared. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's weird that we keep calling that not just us, but everybody calls PT a game where it's like it is, I mean it's it's it is literally PT is playable t- teaser, I, but nobody ever calls it a demo. Meanwhile, so many people call uh, Ground Zeroes a demo. And that's actually a game. <laughs> and that's actually a game. Well, it's PT it's made by the same person, by the way. Yeah, I don't really think about length in a game that game that that trailer has a beginning and an end not a trailer that demo mm-hmm. yeah so it feels like a full game right just a short game yep an experience which uh Silent Hills would have starred Norman Reedus anyway yeah so it's I, I find it hard to believe that it would have been first person do you want to go ahead and talk about Kojima's trailer? Well, hold on. Let's save that for a little bit. I think there was something else that we may have skipped. <laughs> oh, yeah. We were, we were talking about Horizon. Horizon We kind of just skipped yeah, the, we, we the did. VR stuff. Yeah, we glossed over it. Um, but Horizon, I don't want to um, just skip it. That game looks really good. <laughs> um, the combat looks really cool. Yeah. Like fighting robots <laughs> with arrows. Um, was there anything else that they showed of that game? Uh, there was some uh, gameplay footage this morning. I haven't gotten a chance to I watch it yet. I think there was some. Um, I think they showed it at Microsoft, actually. Uh, it's PlayStation exclusive. Is it? Yeah. I mean, they say <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. I might be wrong. All I've seen is the, the, the gameplay they showed at that conference. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, that was enough. That game looks cool. Yeah. Um, they, uh, that conference, by the way, that is a. That is how you do a conference. Just, just <laughs> one game ends, go to the next game. Right. Yeah. No, you don't have to have a guy come out and talk about like um, how revolutionary the game this is and how great the texture is and for like five minutes. Like, no, we. I saw the trailer. Right. That's all I need. <laughs> and then Sony is like really good. Like the past two conferences have been really good. Yeah. Um, this they they really they're really doing new stuff this time around. Like the pacing was completely different. They didn't have so many guests. I think there were only two people up on three people, including Kojima. Three, yeah, uh, three people ever that... on stage. It was just like game trailer, next game trailer, next game. Maybe we'll talk <laughs> about what's next. 
It was uh, the pacing was I think great because like this, if you spend too much time on one thing, you're gonna be so bored, as we will talk about uh, in Nintendo's little thing. As much as I love Nintendo, Sony they had the best presentation. Absolutely, and they probably had. I'd say they had the best presentation last year too. Yeah, with Final Fantasy VII and dreams coming true. Yeah, it and, was like games we've just forgotten. Yeah, we've just given up on. It's like oh. They're all coming. <laughs> yeah, really. Last year had a lot of it benefited from having a lot of really big announcements like Final Fantasy VII and stuff. Like the, was not expecting yeah, to so ever many, actually be released. So many amazing reveals last time. Last they didn't Guardian. have it. They didn't have it this time. Yeah, Last Guardian. I think La- it was the next game they showed. Actually, yeah, we skipped Last Guardian, but we can go back to that. Yeah, it's a pretty quick conversation. Um, <laughs> pretty quick convo. <laughs> they didn't have so many amazing reveals this time around, except for like the one Kojima game. Um, but uh, so board, yeah, I, I feel like it really benefited from having like the the pacing that it did, and the the orchestra was amazing. Like the, I every, think they were orchestrating some of the trailers live. I think they orchestrated uh, a few of them. A majority, if not all, the the orchestra was playing every now and then. They would cut, and then there were uh, uh, orchestrated trailers. Yeah, orchestrated. It's amazing. Like that's so cool. Um, people like people in the um, Kotaku. Like to say Ooh, that <laughs> my favorite website. Oh yes, uh, gaming journalism likes to say that like uh, E3 is just a shit show, and they just like <laughs> it forces developers to like like rework their development cycles so they can have something to show, and it's like it really is really bad for everybody. <laughs> Ugh, don't go, don't support E3. E3 is amazing. It's like a great show. It is a yearly tradition. <laughs> it's it feels like a tradition at this point. It feels like a holiday. It, it it's like it feels like Christmas. With all these new games. Yeah, exactly. It's amazing. It's like people like outside of like the gaming. Um, yeah, they don't know co- a community. They like to say like, "Oh, you're right. That's like your Super Bowl, right? That must be your Super Bowl." Uh, yeah, sure, sports guy. Sure, sports. <laughs> uh-huh. um, <laughs> but it's it kind sports of sports guy. It kind of feels that way, where it's like this yeah. is the, <laughs> the big show of the year. This is when everybody goes. Why we'll talk more about Nintendo in a minute, yeah. but um, except you don't have to choose teams, people. Yeah, you can like you can like everything. You can like other games. You can like Sony and you can like Nintendo. Right. I have both. Microsoft. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, uh, who cares? that's for other people. That's for, that's not for me. Who <laughs> like the Halo? The Halo, <laughs> Call of Duty. We're not gonna talk about Call. of I'm gonna briefly. Talk We're gonna about briefly it. talk about Call of Duty in a minute because we we skipped yeah. a couple things I think. So um, to get back on track, um, we were talking about the Last Guardian. Last Guardian. I haven't um, played Shadow of the Colossus yet. I will <laughs> mark my words. Damn it! The game looks um, amazing, <laughs> and I've I've seen it being played, but that I don't care. I want to play it. I mean, that game looks so good. Um, but the Last Guardian looks looks interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it looks beautiful, first of all, and it it's been a it's been it was teased the first time I think in like two thousand and single digit. Whenever uh, Shadow of the Colossus, whenever that came out, I think that's when. <laughs> really? Wow. Maybe I, maybe a year or two after. Like I had. It got to a point where it was a joke. No one, yeah, and no one believed it was actually coming. But they would ask him every year. The, the uh, developer I don't know his name and like even and, asking became a joke well no he would always say like oh it's in development he would always say that but I mean who really knows <laughs> yeah but uh, and then last year um, they actually announced it I actually saw footage of it um, the game you kind of just thought would never come out yeah um, this new trailer I like the it's kind of like cell shaded yeah like the like the little character you play as the boar the boar, he's like the lighting effects are pretty cool in the game, and I guess there's like there's like a bad guardian. Yeah, I thought I was got a little confused because I was like, there's, why is my friend angry at me now? There's Everybody, two of them. Yeah, there's a bad one. Yeah, you're gonna let them fight. Uh, he doesn't guard. He uh, attacks. <laughs> Great. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll edit that part out in post too. Don't worry. You won't be hearing this part. Yeah. Um, and not this part either. And go. Action. All right. Um, uh, let's see what else happened in that. Uh, oh yeah. So that uh, very few times have I ever seen a release date release date get a standing ovation. 
Oh yeah, because like like we said, that that had been revealed like such a long time ago to the point where like expecting it to show up was a joke, and like now it finally <laughs> for the first time had a release date and that got a standing ovation from the crowd. <laughs> it was uh, it was amazing. Yeah, that is um. Hope it's good. I, it looks. It looks <laughs> That's all terrific. I can say about. There's a lot of games that have been in development for a long time, like Zelda included. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, well, I, I've just been saying, hope it's good. I've learned not to get my expectations up too much, um, as hard as that is sometimes. <laughs> so hope it, hope it's good. Um, That's all you can hope for. After that, I think they talked about VR, mm-hmm. which is neat I guess I don't know I don't really I think I'd get bored of VR after a while like just give me a controller but um some of the stuff they showed was really cool though yeah. the Star Wars game oh yeah but they showed like they didn't show too much but they showed enough mm-hmm. you're piloting an X-Wing yeah in virtual reality I, uh, what else do you need to show? Yeah, that's, right. That's, I mean, that's all you need. That's so cool. <laughs> I uh, flipped the freak out whenever I um, saw that because, like, one of the first games I'd ever played was, like, uh, Rogue Squadron for the N64. N64. Yeah. I had a very uh, unique and select, weird selection of <laughs> N64 games. I didn't yeah. play Mario. I didn't play Legend of Zelda. I just didn't have those games. You had a 1080. I had 1080. I 1080. had Perfect Dark. And uh, and I had Rogue Squadron. I mean, those are uh, those aren't super obscure games. Well, not exactly obscure, but like n- weird that I didn't play Mario. Weird that yeah. I didn't play Zelda. Um, yeah, weird. <laughs> You're weird. Get out of here. Oh man, I don't deserve to be on this podcast. No, come back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gone. Um, and scene. <laughs> no. Um, uh, Let's see. There's so, not much else you can talk about it because it's really short. Yeah, but um, it's a little sizzle reel. Looks cool. What other VR games were there? Uh, they um, showed Mission to Mars, uh, where they were uh, like on Red Planet. It wasn't oh. Mars. Oh yeah, it was another Red Planet, and it was like some like story driven oh, yeah. space adventure. Space Marines. Yeah, I'm so I I love Space Marines. I'm glad um half the games. <laughs> Our space marine. None of the games were space marines. Just Call of Duty and uh, maybe that one. I think. I feel like there's a lot of games recently. Oh yeah, that sure. have been space marines. Plenty. Uh, and um, I don't know. Do something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, space navy. Only exception, uh, Metroid. If no, new... no exceptions. None no? at all. No. 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 Okay. No exceptions. Metroid's bullshit. Um. Okay. Say it. I don't want to. <laughs> you just well then you have to accept Call of Duty then. No. <laughs> say Metroid's bullshit. I won't say it. <laughs> I love Metroid, my favorite series. You know who doesn't love Metroid? Nintendo. Apparently. <laughs> they didn't even show Federation Force. Mm-mm. I I think they're uh, that game's just gonna come out. It's just gonna be a whisper, and it'll be forgotten. It already was a whisper at the last E3. It was just like. No, or whenever they first showed it, it was like a new Metroid game. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and but it's like it's not it's not what I want though. <laughs> it's a soccer game. You're getting close, guys. You've got the title. <laughs> Just <laughs> make a different game. Right. Well, um. Let's see. Let's get back on track. Um, all right. <laughs> That was me uh, getting back on track. So, we'll add, we'll edit that in post. We'll, yeah. we'll find. Um, go ahead and insert back on track dot mp three. <laughs> go ahead and I'll find it. Insert that at the thirty four fifty four. Go ahead and four fifty four. Yeah, make a time. Make a note of that. We've already been talking for half an hour. Yeah, I know it's crazy. <laughs> we still got so much more to talk about. Um, We've not even done with Sony's conference. No, no. Um, Let's, all right. Okay, I don't. We're remember, halfway through. I don't remember any other VR games other than Star Wars and oh, Final Fantasy fifteen. Right, Fantasy? you get to play as Prompto, which is yes. The, finally, that had the Prompto. That had the the <laughs> coldest reception of anything. That was just like two guys going, woo, woo. The, those are the two biggest Prompto fans. Prompto. No, it's um. It looks interesting. You can uh, you can, you can go in the first person. You can shoot. You can warp around. That won't be disorienting. <laughs> um, 
and then you can uh look at the girl i guess yeah you get the weird little uh you get to ogle in yeah. virtual reality who made this game kojima <laughs> Uh, Japan. It felt like it reminded me of sitting in the ACC with Quiet. It was just oh like, yeah, in the helicopter. Yeah, in Metal Gear Five, you uh, you have your buddy system. You can like ride with them in your helicopter as you go out into missions. And one of them is a, a sniper named Quiet who's wearing a bikini, and that's her default. I'm sure. I'm sure you know about Metal Gear. Well, to those who don't know, to those who don't know, uh, Quiet doesn't wear a lot of clothes. There is a story reason. Yeah, but I mean, you know. She and needs to not wear clothes to breathe, you heartless people! <laughs> How dare you! She'll die! <laughs> she's <How> a plant. <laughs> spoilers, she's a plant. Yeah. That's not real spoil. That's half spoilers. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's kind of simplifying it. Final Fantasy XV looks... It's just looking better each time I see it. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually really excited. <laughs> I wasn't too excited because... Final Fantasy XIV was an MMO. I don't care about MMOs. Final Fantasy XIII, we all know, is uh, not good. So the fast two, I haven't really been interested. And then XV, it's not turn-based anymore. No. But uh, I can learn to accept that. <laughs> this game looks pretty cool. I can learn to change. We had this discussion before where I, I f they didn't have to call it a Final Fantasy game. Yeah. Since it's no longer turn-based. But it does take place in the Final Fantasy world, I guess. Yeah. Well, it's, it's... It's just a very different gameplay. Yeah. It looks so cool, though. <laughs> you can ride a chocobo in yeah. the trailer. Yeah, you know, it's like real time. And it's Cho really cool. Chocobo. Um, uh, and and then... Did you, do you know what, then, uh, why they're driving, by the way? Why? It's a, it's a stag party. It's like they're they're going to go pick up his wife. <laughs> they're going to get married and they need a is that really the story yeah it's it's like a, a bachelor party right now so that's why it's a bunch of bros on in a car <laughs> oh that's why they're all wearing black i guess yeah i didn't i did not know anything about the story i thought <laughs> it was a bunch of edgy guys yeah going on going camping <laughs> yeah i wasn't too sure about it and then somebody some in the in another uh and interview, summed it up <laughs> yeah in another interview it was just like yeah they're just uh they're on a bachelor party which explains why they're wearing what they're wearing that explains why they're wearing all black and the one girl isn't there yeah. she's wearing all like all really colorful clothing mm -hmm. I was like why are all the guys all in all black that's why mm. so finally equality you, yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so let's see uh where were we Final Fantasy, there wasn't really too much new stuff, I think, other than the VR. Mm -hmm. um, I really want that game. How do you feel about VR in general? I think um, I think it needs a few more years. Really? But um, I think so, too. I, I don't think I could play a 20-plus hour game in a mm -hmm. VR. I think maybe, like, little, like, experiences, I guess? Like, little short, like, demos mm -hmm. would be fun. But I don't think a game like... Final Fantasy, for example, which is n notoriously known for being uh, long games. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I could do a whole Final Fantasy in VR or a whole Resident Evil. That's just me. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure someone would. I, on the other hand, am probably going to get it I would very soon I would, after it's released. I think I'd get motion sickness because some games I don't think are really <laughs> would really work with VR. Probably, yeah. Like um, Call of Duty, Infinite Call of Duty Warfare. Oh, Let's go ahead and talk about Call of Duty. That is the next one. So uh, it it uh, it's it's Space Marines. Mm -hmm. So already it was like I've seen this. It um, it tricked I me. Mean, it looked cool. It tricked me because they and got then the, I get, and then I got bored. Yeah. See, that's exactly my experience. Because like um, a game called Elite Dangerous is another. I haven't um, heard of that. It's it's an Xbox exclusive PC. That's why I haven't heard of it. Yeah, that's why I haven't played it. I want to play it so bad. It's uh it's a game where like you have an entire universe. It think of um um what's that game? It's coming out for PS4. Um, no Man's Sky. No yeah. Man's Sky, but not stylistically colorful. It's just like. Did they show that at E3? No, they didn't. Um, but yeah, they, that sucks. I think it has a release date now, though. So that sucks. It does. Um, little context on that. No Man's Sky has been in development for years. Um, I think they're pretty close to finishing, and then their studio flooded, 
and then now they have to completely restart. Yeah, that's terrible. That sucks. <laughs> like, cause that there's, game, there's no way to prevent that. Yeah, it's the, like God didn't want your game ready. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> no, it's not ready yet. Um, yeah, that was supposed to be a release title, and I I mention that every time we mention. Uh, last, oh yeah, uh, that was No Man's Sky a launch title. <laughs> that was going to be like a bundle with like the PS4. I forgot about that. And uh, and then the studio flooded. That sucks. That is... That's a little indie developer, too. That's why it's so That's impressive. even worse. It's a little indie, because uh, they're the people who made, like, little motorcycle games. Uh, <laughs> like, Joe Dangerous, I think. Um, um, yeah. There are a few cool things in the trailer. Yeah. I'm gonna admit, I it's... don't care, but there are some cool... There there's, was... there's grappling, mm -hmm. flying around in space. Also, the fact that you're flying around in space... Means the enemies could be anywhere, so that kind of changes the game. Yeah. Um, however, uh, I don't know. I'm not really a fan of those kind of first-person shooters yeah. that are super fast like that. I don't hate first-person games. <laughs> this podcast probably makes it seem like I do, but <laughs> um, I just don't like uh, those kinds of first-person shooters. Mm. Um, I like slower games. Right. As, <laughs> as soon as you got in the the ship. And he started going out into some space combat. I was hooked. I that was, part, oh yeah, that part was cool. That was, I think, the the most interesting part. And as soon as he gets out of the ship, it comes to a grinding halt. When he gets out of the ship, it's like, I don't really care about this as much. <laughs> no, because... Uh, it, it reminded me of, um, uh, what was it, Star Fox Assault on the GameCube. Yeah. All the flying missions were cool. Uh, and then there's missions where you're on foot as Fox with a gun, and, um... Those weren't as cool. <laughs> and that's what that reminded me of. Yeah, it was that. Um, they, if that whole game was just in a ship, well, it wouldn't be a Call of Duty game. Yeah, it would but be Elite Dangerous or No I, Man's Sky. I'd probably be more interested in it. Yeah. I'm, side note, I'm looking really forward to No Man's Sky and Elite Dangerous coming to PS4. Oh, yeah. Those games are going to be amazing. What are the VR games? Uh, I think that's really it. They showed, the okay, ones. so they, they showed uh, like a little quote-unquote trailer for uh, Batman Arkham VR. That wasn't a trailer. That was not a trailer. That was, that was a close-up of Batman's mask mm -hmm. and, I guess, uh, the, the the Jonker talking. Um, that's Mr. Mark Hamill, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the jokester. M Mark Hamill's back playing Joker's voice. and uh, Playing Joker's voice. Because <laughs> I, I don't think, I don't know if Joker will be in it. Um, so... Mark oh, Hamill doesn't need to hire something. Yeah, Mark Hamill's the most wishy-washy little uh, voice actor for Joker <laughs> ever. So both him and I can't remember Batman's voice at the moment. It's um. Is it Troy Baker? No. no. Uh, he does every other voice. <laughs> um. Uh, I can't. Um, Kevin Conroy. Kevin Conroy played. Batman. There he is. There he is. That's my Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Woo! All right. Uh, Kevin Conroy played <laughs> Batman in the original uh, Batman animated series. He also played uh, Batman throughout the Arkham games. So both both voice actors reprise their roles in these video games, and it was supposed to end at uh, Arkham, City? Arkham City, the second game. Yeah. The second game was supposed to close it because it kills the jo uh, spoiler alert. Spoiler. Joke. Joke. Man dies. Jokerman. <laughs> the font. Joker man, uh, Joker man, you made me say it. Uh, Joker, <laughs> Joker dies at the end of Arkham City, which is supposed to really conclude it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so even Mark Hamill himself said in interviews, I am not going to play the Joker in any iteration of any, either like uh, a movie, TV show, video game. I'm not playing the Joker again. And here we are. And then in the very next game, which I'm, I'm glad he said that because in the next game, Arkham Knight. Um, he he appears as a hallucination, to uh, but he's still playing the Joker. He's still playing the Joker, but it's an amazing role. I love the Joker in that game. He he just Batman is slowly losing his mind in in uh, Arkham Knight, and then the Joker just appears. So like you <laughs> you you fight a bunch of guys hypothetically, and then like you you look at a corner and nothing's there. Then you look around, and then you hear Mark Hamill's voice, and you look back, and he's like leaning on that little corner, and it's like That's hey. Cool. You really messed those guys up. That's cool. Yeah, it's amazing. I love it so much. Um, and it, it's out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, and um, I won't spoil that game, so we can go back to what we were talking about. I won't spoil that game. <laughs> uh, 
I jo- don't. Joker dies. <laughs> um, he dies again in the third one. He he comes back just to be killed. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Arkham VR ha- not a trailer. It was yeah. Uh, there's look, no gameplay. <laughs> look, look at this texture. Look at that texture. Listen to Mark Hamill play Joker yet again. Look after at these lighting said, effects. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> um. Yeah. What? Okay. All, all that we said about VR, I probably will be getting it like yeah. s- soon after it's released because I'll try it. It's a brand new world, if baby. You're, if you're getting it, <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I'll have to try it. It's gonna be great. I think. I mean, it's not gonna be great. Obviously, it's like the it's like the N64 where it's like we're just starting to do like yeah 3D. whatever. Yeah, it's it's the ground floor. Yeah, and, I uh, like um, I like at the conference when they said uh, millions of users already have the technology in their PS4 right now. But I thought it was pretty cool. They already have it ready. Yeah. You just need a headset. Yeah, exactly. That's why I think... That's pretty cool. PlayStation VR is going to be the most attainable uh, of all the VR that's coming out. Because it'll. I think it starts off... Uh, price is three ninety nine. Yeah. Which is so cheap for VR. Wait, what? Yeah, three ninety nine. I Oh, wait. No, I misheard you. I heard... I thought you said thirty nine ninety nine. Three thousand dollars. It's it no thirty nine dollars ninety nine cents. Oh, 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 oh I thought it's you... like it's less than a video. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's four hundred dollars. Oh, okay. Which that is, seems more reasonable. Yeah, it's, <laughs> because like the only reason it's like that is because they failed with the PlayStation Move several years ago. Oh yeah. So now they've already got these oh, motion controls. Oh, you mean uh, we too? Yeah, we too. Sony presents we too. Yeah. So. Back years you, later <laughs> if you if you don't know about it uh playstation tried their hand at the wii market with uh, motion controls uh that with was the like playstation move that was like four or five years after the wii came out though yeah it was l- too little too late the gimmick for motion uh, control was all way gone it even had like the same not the same but yeah you hold a remote and you swing it to do like tennis mm-hmm. which like Okay, that game exists. <laughs> it's existed for years now. Yeah. <laughs> What's the point of this? It was a uh, it was a failed uh, peripheral. I just remember seeing that and being like, "What?" It was it was Who's kind of buy this. No one did. That's why it, it, it did so. Everyone in the world already <laughs> owns a Wii. Yeah, it it did so poorly. And then there's the Connect, which like no one likes. Everyone was like, "Whoa, this is so revolutionary." But you're doing the same things you would do on the Wii. You just don't hold a controller. Mm-hmm. It's the same. It's the same stuff. Yeah. You just don't hold a controller. I don't know why people didn't realize that. Well, I know people did realize that, but parents. Yeah. They see it. And they're like, "Oh, my kid's gonna love this." Anyway, what other games? <laughs> All right, let's let's move right along from VR. I'm gonna. I don't want to start complaining about motion controls. <laughs> All right, so next was the big one. Next was... Next is probably our favorites. You needed a guy to come up on stage to bring another guy up on stage to bring <laughs> a trailer up on stage. So they... Um, the I don't know. Is, I think he's the vice president of PlayStation. I'm not going to fact check it. He's a yeah. big wig. Let's go ahead and say um, he's the creator of Sony. <laughs> he made the TVs and the Walkman. He also makes every single disc by hand. Yes. Uh, citation needed, but <laughs> this is a fact. <laughs> yes. Uh, he came up on stage and said uh, basically a little spiel about uh, how PlayStation's the place to be if you want uh, close connections with like developers. Is like PlayStation's the one to go to whenever like because they they treat their developers well. All I remember is that guy's voice sounded like he inhaled some helium. Yeah, that's his voice. I, I wish I could remember his name. I think it's like uh, Trent Reznor? Trent, Trent something or other? Trent Reznor, Nine Inch Nails. I know you're <laughs> listening right now. Listen, you got some good tunes, but you gotta stop puffing helium before you present these, <laughs> these huge conferences, man. Anyway, I liked your soundtrack in uh, Social Network. Go on. <laughs> Very good job on that one. Good job. That was pretty cool. All right, but enough about you. Sit down, Trent. Sit down, Trent. 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 This isn't about you. And scene. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we have a clear ending in our bits. We have to 
we have to stop ourselves. <laughs> we're already at 50 minutes. <laughs> oh my god. And we're still not done talking about Sony. All right, uh, so let's... Oh, God. Good thing Nintendo had one game. Yeah, exactly. They'll get it over <laughs> real quick. Um, uh, all right, so the big one. Kojima comes out and he's like, I'm back! Because... Uh, if you don't know, they gave him the the coolest intro. Yeah, let's let's summarize Kojima's endeavors mm-hmm. in the past year. So he is working on Metal Gear Solid Five, which is probably the best game of last year. Yeah, absolutely, that I, game is fantastic. It's safe to say, we both agree. <laughs> um, Konami is weird, um, and was like, they fired him, I guess. I think it was because no he, one, no one still really knows why. It's not clear. What I heard was that he had, uh, he was spending too much time making the best game possible, and they wanted to ship it Christmas. Yeah, and then that game came out and is one of the best games ever. Mm-hmm. So, okay, dude. Um, you, you just fired your star. You just yeah, they fired probably their best developer there. Yeah. Um, and then uh decided to not make video games anymore and uh, focus on pachinko machines which are kind of like slot machines um it's a bigger thing in japan um but why why (laughs) (laughs) konami uh, known for great classics as uh metal gear and castlevania um no longer making video games um, all of a sudden. Is that is that like official? They're not making video games anymore? Just, That's what they said. Maybe it'll come know. back, but mobile games. From what I from games. what I've heard, it's just really bad working there, and I think also because Kojima has been trying to end the Metal Gear series for so long. He's mm-hmm. been trying for so long. Since three, actually, yeah. three was supposed to be the last one, yeah. and then there's four, and then there's Peace Walker, and then there's five. <laughs> Which is two games technically. So I, uh, you know, we love him for these games because these games are fantastic. these games are great. But like he, for a long time, he's been wanting to do something else. See, I mean, like I feel kind of good for I'm him. Glad he is now. Like that was my first thought was like that's that's terrible that you fired your star and also he can finally rest. He can do whatever he wants he can, now. now. He's finally free to make not make a Metal Gear game. And so he and so here he, he is left not, Konami. Konami had like. Some weird thing on him where he couldn't present, he couldn't be in public for a while, and then as soon as that ban went up, Sony immediately is just like, "Hey, um, uh, welcome." <laughs> <laughs> they scooped them up. They they're just, just, they're like, just like, "Hey, make games for us." Hey, you don't want this Konami? Hey, we'll you take can, it. You can make, you can make whatever. Yeah, we trust you. You can make whatever. <laughs> um, also, I should mention. This was, um, they were already working on another game, by the way, um, when they fired him. They were working on Silent Hills, mm-hmm. which is another just thing I just can't comprehend. <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on with Konami. But anyway, so, Kojima's back. Mm-hmm. He's working on games. He's not affiliated with Konami. He, he's, a, he's a happier man. I, I would imagine so. Kojima's cool. He's a free man. Any game he makes is gonna be good. Like, um, probably. They show <laughs> they show demos for all these games. I don't care. There's a CG trailer for. Uh, yeah, Kojima's Co- trailer is not even gameplay. It's and it's the coolest trailer. It was the highlight of all of all of E3 so far. It was well, argumentatively the the highlight so far. It's um, it's just this little. In our opinion. Yeah, it's it's like this two or three minute CG trailer starring Norman Reedus and it's like not clear nothing's clear what's happening it's so confusing nobody knows what's happening <laughs> everyone loves it <laughs> okay I'm going to describe the trailer go ahead um, in case you haven't seen the trailer it's pretty easy to follow trailer pretty standard you know yeah. don't watch um, the trailer until don't watch it tra- actually just you don't even have to watch the trailer because I'm going to sum it up right yeah. now uh, it starts there's a little, little quote at the beginning okay cool and then we have some pan it's just like a little panning shot of a bunch of dead crabs um washed up dead crabs you know typical you know your typical video game uh scene and um you got some some handprint showing up in the sand you know pretty spooky mm-hmm. then you uh there's a naked man lying on the beach um p- plot twist it's Norman Reedus whoa and um also there's a baby and 
the, the baby still has his umbilical cord maybe connected to Norman Reedus we don't really see that but uh, uh. who knows <laughs> and um, he picks up the baby and he's he's crying and he's really emotional and uh, sad and there's re- there's this really awesome uh, um, song in the background um, it's really cool and while he's crying and then he looks down and now the baby is oil now he's covered with tar um, and um, he has like this um, this like cross on his chest like a big scar down yeah, in his like stomach a cr- like a cross shaped scar mm-hmm. and then he looks up into into the ocean and you see a bunch of like five guys just floating <laughs> in off the in the distance far distance far far distance you can barely make them out as people they're just floating there and then they disappear and you, you look around and you see the beach and there's a bunch of dead whales dead animals bunch of umbilical cords i think um but you know nothing weird and um, nothing weird at all and norman reedus uh it continues to not wear clothes and then death stranding <laughs> logo shows up which is like to go back to what i said earlier was just like there's n- like it's a cg trailer it's not even gameplay and like when that title came up what the heck is death stranding doesn't even matter i'm excited it's it's so cool though <laughs> I'm trying to find out who Kojima's. that song did. I know it's called "I'm Still St- I'm oh, Still okay. I'm Still Coming." Can't stop coming. <laughs> Not true. The Not song true. is called <laughs> "I'm Still Coming," and I'm trying to find the artist. Um, I think it's by Zero, or I, maybe that's the album. It's either the album or the artist is called Zero or O. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, Hideo Kojima said on Twitter that he heard the song while he was in Sweden, maybe. <laughs> And was like, this is so cool. I gotta use this. That's basically how I found that song. Yeah. I'm a. Uh, I'm glad Kojima's very vocal on Twitter. I wish he would have like a Pandora th- uh, oh, track yeah. list so you can just like listen to all of this listen songs, all songs he's listening to. It's gonna be mostly Joy Division. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, yeah. That. Is it even worth trying to piece together what that trailer's about? No. Not even I mean, worth it. I mean, like... My only thought is, like, maybe it's about oil spills? <laughs> because, it's about like, a big BP spill. It's about uh, a big oil. <laughs> a big oil company. Uh, so I don't right. know. Who knows what that game's so, about? Only, it's about only a day old, probably. There's, like, little speculation we can do right now. Um, Kojima Productions now has a new logo as of his new uh, rebirth. Oh yeah, I forget. So, the, to describe the logo, it looks like a profile of a skull within uh, some sort of weird clockwork, like clockwork, like futuristic helmet. Yeah. So, like space helmet. It looks like a super villain logo. Speaking of um, going back to logo talk, welcome to Logo Cast. Um, I love that logo. <laughs> It, it looks amazing like it's the most well, like what they teach you in like logo design is like keep it simple you know but also like make it distinguishable this logo's so cool though. it's so complex but it's, it looks it, amazing as soon as I saw it I was like I want that on a shirt and then a few hours later he's like by the way I'm making shirts <laughs> why wouldn't you that's an of amazing course. logo um, people bought it immediately I'm sure uh, people have it like tattooed like no one even knows what it is yeah um, but I guess you wear that suit in the game yes so oh yeah um, the character's name is Ludens. yes the the logo's character is apparently i think based off of like some sort of mythology is a character named Ludin, uh and they released some uh promotional art like yeah. over the last couple of months where uh they had one the first one that they let out was another art like fully art uh Anyway, a it's fully rendered, fully rendered yeah. image of uh, the profile of a character wearing this big, looks like an astronaut like suit, an actual three D model. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you can see like the skull inside of like a giant helmet. Yeah. Um, and then more recently, they re- released another image of the same character, more closer to the front, and you can see, you can see his eyes. You can see the eyes within the skull. The skull, the skull is just like a mask. Yes. Really. It's just there to look cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no purpose for it. <laughs> Absolutely. It uh, just looks cool. Aesthetic. Um, for the aesthetic. And people have speculated that it's going to be more mech combat, which I don't put that behind Kojima at all. Uh, that boy loves his mechs. That boy loves his mechs. Let's see. He made uh, Police Knots was was one of his first games. Uh, Is he either Police Knots or Snatcher? 
I, Snatcher, or well, maybe the. No. I think it's up in the air. Which one's first? No, Snatcher came after Metal Gear because they referenced Metal Gear in it. Ah, okay. I think, yeah. All right. Well, uh, anyway, uh, early games. Yeah. Uh, Police Knots, one of his early games had a mech. Uh, I don't Zone know. Zone of the Enders. Zone of the Enders is all the, about mechs. Yeah, it's franchise. I think it's like a three three game franchise. Uh, Zone of the Enders, where you play as a mech. And um, Metal Gear, which started as an NES game. Which is about trying to stop a mech mm -hmm. uh, from nuking the world. Yeah, every one of those games is about mechs. And I don't put that behind them. The Death Stranding will be about mechs as well. Silent Hills was probably going to have a mech. Absolutely. <laughs> At some point. Yeah. It's <laughs> You're walking down the hall and just a Gundam yeah. blasts through the window. It's a metaphor for child abuse. It's all a metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> In Silent Hills. <laughs> See, it's the it's the toy comes to life. Right, the toy when hurts you. Now you're the toy. Think about that. Think about that. I'm so glad Kojima's not doing a Silent Hills game because then I would have had to have played Silent Hills. You oh, had to that's play horror. A, a horror game. I would have played a horror game for Kojima. I like that. Um, you love this man so much. No matter what he makes, well, I have to play it. I mean, absolutely. Have you seen any of his other games he's made before? Mm. He's made. There's one game I haven't played called Boktai. Boktai? On the Game Boy Advance, or Boktai, I think. Hmm. Where, in very Hideo fashion, very fourth wall breaking, um, it, it, there's a day night system. It's about, like, killing vampires. Wow. And, like, I think oh, it's kind of like an yes, RPG. I've heard about this. And it has, like, solar panels. Mm -hmm. So it detects if there's, like, light or not. I don't, know. <laughs> don't let Kojima do anything. <laughs> wow, that that man is amazing. Uh, they 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 put out like several uh, interviews of like people who work underneath him. Yeah. Who would be like, I thought he <laughs> was joking when he mentioned this. I soon realized he was not joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure like so many things that he mentioned sounds like, haha, sure, like we can do that, and, and then, then it ends up in the final game. He actually did it. <laughs> the absolute mod man. <laughs> he's a he's a real renaissance man. Uh, I will play any game he makes. Um, so that's Death Stranding, and that concludes Kojima Cast. Yeah, we are <laughs> now for watch we're, we're after an hour actually. Should we uh, go like an hour and a half? I think because I got more to talk about. We can wrap up Sony real quick. Yeah, because the next thing he showed Spider Man. Spider Man, which is funny because like they all had kind of like some kind of reprieve in between trailers, which was just like here's Death Stranding. The like they, there's a whole. Uh, song and dance to bring Kojima out to bring yeah. out this trailer. And then Spider-Man. Immediately after the trailer, Spider-Man trailer. I don't even remember Spider-Man at all because I was still thinking about Kojima's trailer. Why, <laughs> why didn't they just end with Kojima's trailer? Yeah, I don't know. They had more. Oh, they man. had Spider-Man game. Okay. And then they had um... I don't even remember the zombie games. Yeah, they, they played um... Outlast? That's another game, I think. I keep thinking about Until Gone, but it's, it's Until uh, Gone. Days Gone. Days Gone. They were like, we're going to show another game we showed earlier. It's like, oh, cool. Days Gone. Listen, <laughs> that's like the one game I don't care about, yeah. other than the other ones I mentioned today. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think the, the big highlights, I think, were the, um, God of War uh, okay, and, yeah. and Death Stranding. Death Stranding, we're not going to play for another seven years. We're not going to Oh, who knows when that game's coming out. Who knows, but I, uh, we'll be excited until then. Uh, I remember we were still in high school when the announced Phantom Pain. Mm -hmm. That was before we even knew it was a Metal Gear game. We have grown as people since the first trailer of Metal Gear 5. <laughs> We've changed. I have children now. War has changed. <laughs> um, Reference. Right. So, alright, we can wrap so that, up. So that's Sony. Yeah. I th they yeah. had a lot. And that's why we were able to talk for an hour <laughs> solely on solely on Sony. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Solely on Sony, a podcast just about PlayStation and Walkmans. I don't know. So now we're going to completely go against what you just said and anyway, talk about Nintendo. Anyway, let's talk about Nintendo now. So uh, I, I can't I can't say I was disappointed because they did announce weeks in advance that mm -hmm. we're mainly just going to show Zelda. Yeah. That, if, that is what they did. If they had not, uh, that would have been completely... Now, it's very possible that they could announce more games. Mm -hmm. I mean, even today, they announced a new game, Ever Oasis. And I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> and um, 
there's still a few more days at E3. They could very well announce more games after we yeah. finish this podcast. I, I do not doubt that there will be at least one or two games with like, hey, by the way, check out this new thing from developer so-and-so. I'm going to go ahead and call it now. Mark, mark my words. Mother 3. <laughs> it's coming out this year. That's it. I'm, I got the inside scoop. I got Reggie's number. I was like, hey, Reggie. Mother 3? And he said, yes. And then I said, and then I asked him, new F0? And uh, I, he hasn't responded yet. I think, I, 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 I don't know if there's going to be new F0. Have you seen whether or not he, he's like, he's seen it yet? The little Facebook message that says he's I, seen it? He's, he has seen it. Oh. How long um, ago? Weeks ago. Oh. He's, I, I don't know if I should text him again. I don't know if, is that, if that's being pushy. Uh, be, be, um, start off by saying, um, oh, hey, Reggie, how's yeah. your day going? Oh, like, hey, Reggie. Keep it casual. Hey, how's it, how's, maybe start a being conversation. president. Maybe start a conversation about Mario Party. Just like, hey, the new Mario Party, that sure looks good, right? <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, new Zelda, cool. Anyway, so about the new F-Zero, am I right? And maybe he'll slip up, maybe he'll tell me about it. Right. Tell me about Cap Fal- Captain Falcon's recent endeavors. <laughs> uh, what if they do make a new F-Zero game, and it's like, it's like not a racing game? <laughs> 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 Captain Falcon's cooking simulator. I don't know. We're breaking F Zero conventions. No cars. Anyway, <laughs> F Zero confirmed twenty sixty eight. Yeah, that is a fact. We're looking at it right now. Uh, we just got through watching the trailer. I just I just saw the trailer. Um, leaked footage. Ca- cell phone camera. Um, anyway, let's talk about real <laughs> games. We'll have to decide later whether or not to cut that whole section. <laughs> Uh, I'll decide now. Keep it. All of it. Um, and see. So, Nintendo's, <laughs> Nintendo's conference, um, they showed the, the first Zelda trailer. Oh, well, not the first Zelda trailer. That was the first thing we saw was a Zelda trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, looking, it lo- looking good. Yeah, absolutely. I had kind of lost interest in this game because they had delayed it so much. And so when I when they said, oh, we're really going to show a Zelda, I was like, I don't know, that's it. But after seeing it, um, the excitement is back. <laughs> like, okay, I see why you've delayed this game. This, yeah. You've really been working on it. Um, open world Zelda. You can go wherever, whenever. Like, <laughs> like it's confirmed you can just skip story elements, too. Yeah. You can just walk right past that. It's, a, it's very. It looks very influenced by Zelda One, which is pro- maybe my favorite Zelda, honestly, or up there. Um, just the fact that you have so much freedom, and I don't know if it's just like the, if it's just the demo, because they said that you can't go to any towns, and they've removed characters from the demo, so there's no spoilers. But you're very isolated in the demo. It's just you, mm-hmm. and I, I like that. Um, I like that the old man from Zelda 1's in it. <laughs> well, I think it's the old man from Zelda 1. Speculation at this point. It's definitely influenced. And I'm, I'm, I really like that it's not motion controls. Oh, absolutely. And the, <clears throat> that from what we've seen is only like just a part of the map. Yeah. It's like, the, the, like they go to the map mm-hmm. and it's you the can see there's map. more of the map. It's huge. Mm-hmm. I, I want this game. It looks fantastic. I, I want to start by saying I'm not a huge Zelda fan. Like I said, I didn't play it when I was growing up. I think I would have if I did. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I played uh, a big section of Twilight Princess and uh, well, a small little chunk of uh, Wind Waker. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy Zelda moderately, and um, so I wasn't like too. I wasn't banking so much on Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. Did you play a Link Between Worlds? I, oh, actually, I did. I did play Link Between Worlds. I, I think I've gotten that's a good game. Pretty far into that one too. So that's a good game. So it, yeah, it's it's really really good. I um, I uh, I've played just about every Zelda game and beaten them except for like a few except like Minish Cap I haven't played. And yeah, that might be it. Oh, Triforce Heroes I didn't play that. <laughs> uh, so um, I've I'm so zero for three because I've played 
at least three, I think, yeah, three Zelda games I haven't beaten a single one yet. Yeah, um, so... But uh, this one surprised me how much I'm interested in it. Yeah. Um, because... Uh, it looks so good. It's so entirely different from every other Zelda game. Um, it, they said from last E3 that they wanted to go back to its roots, where it's... the Well, Zelda 1 is there's a cave in the first screen... And you get a sword from that one, yeah. and it's just like no, it's not clear what you do. It's just oh yeah, you. I don't know if it's just a demo, but you wake up and, and you play. You're you're in the game, and now. just like Zelda one, it's go. It's not like Twilight Princess where uh, the, you go to the first dungeon uh, two hours into the game <laughs> after all the story. It's like you get out of the cave and you're in the world now. Explore right, and the old man shows up, and you can you don't even have to talk to him. You can. I don't know if you ever even have to ever talk to him. Maybe you not. Just, you can just walk right past him. You can beat the story and not ever know what you were doing. Yeah. And I think, yeah, it's confirmed Ganon's the villain of this one. Well, they talk about Ganon a lot. Oh, really? So. Well, good. I'm glad that there's a villain. I'm glad that Ganon's a villain. Ganon, I like Ganon as a villain. Yeah, he's, he makes for a good villain. I think every other villain has just been like somebody trying to resurrect Ganon, isn't it? <laughs> um... Skyward Sword had Girahim. He was trying to resurrect the Demon King, mm -hmm. who would later kind of become Ganon. Mm -hmm. Zant, um, I think he was... I think it was something like he was given power by Ganon. Mm. Um, or something, or he gave Ganon power or freed Ganon. I don't really remember. Ganon's but, involved. But Ganon, you find, was the main villain. And... Uh, yeah, it feels like a lot of the time, even a link to the past, there's Agahim. Agahim might actually be Ganon. <laughs> a Link Between Worlds was Yuga right. trying to resurrect Ganon, who died in A Link to the Past. Yuga, yes, Yuga's the one I thought was a woman. Yuga, yeah, me too. Yuga is, in fact, a man. Yeah. A very uh, effeminate man who likes to laugh. A man who looks like a grandma. I thought yeah, it was just an old woman. I thought he, I think a lot of people thought it was an old woman, especially the way he laughed. He laughs like very uh, yeah old no, anime. You can't really tell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like that. It's it's uh. Um, I was surprised to when later on they're like he him and I was like, is, is there another villain? I don't know. Yeah, they say that a lot. The pronouns. Yeah. And well, anyway, <laughs> we were talking about the new Zelda game. Right. Let's not go too far in the old. Uh, I liked it. You could walk rock climb. Yeah, that's, that's cool. In I only have one complaint. What's that? And it's really not a big one. It's just that the running meters back from Skyward Sword, mm -hmm. I don't see the point in that. Like, I understand the climbing meter, because that, otherwise you could probably climb out of the map. Right. <laughs> but the running meter, I don't, I don't really see the point. And I maybe, I don't know. I guess, I, maybe to make Epona feel like she's needed. Cause I oh yeah I assume yeah you're otherwise get a Pona. otherwise I guess it would make the horse kind of useless if you can just run right all the time, but I mean in Metal in Metal Gear Solid Five you can run forever right. <laughs> there's no meter, <laughs> but you can also get on the horse the horse is much faster and the horse is faster so maybe I don't know <laughs> I don't get the point of the running meter it makes sense it's more realistic because you can't run forever in real life you would get tired you can't run forever james you can't run <laughs> but um answer for your crimes <laughs> atone <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah that was something i didn't like in skyward sword that they're bringing back but that seems like the only thing from skyward sword yeah. that they're bringing back so it's not a big complaint yeah but skyward sword had a lot of things i didn't like that uh, that that uh that I think they're just gonna avoid. I'm really looking forward to it. I watched some. Uh, they put out some more gameplay today. They have like uh, cooking elements. You, you oh can, yeah. You can hunt in the wild and Co you can collect their meat. I like that. And then you can uh, in, you can collect other foods in the in the wild and you can like mix them together and actually prepare a meal. I and love I love games. I love that. I love games where if you equip armor, mm -hmm. it actually physically changes your appearance. Mm -hmm. um, this, that's what I liked about uh, Shin Megami Tensei 4 on the 3DS is that there's a bunch of armor that looks really cool um, that's also a problem is because I would just want to wear the cool armor even though it would <laughs> probably be better to get <laughs> yeah. you know armor with better defense but 
I wanted to wear the leather jacket and the superhero mask. <laughs> it's like, there's better armor, but this one looks cooler. Right. I think Zelda's gonna be like that, where it's like, yeah, I could get, like, the cool armor, but he looks so good in green, though. <laughs> <laughs> Any game like that, I... I, I just choose the coolest looking armor. I'm trying to think of one recently, I remember there was like it has, you, know, like you can either go for functionality or you can go for style, and it's like, yeah. well, I mean, what fun is functionality if you can't look awesome while doing it? Oh, Metal Gear had that too. Yeah, but it didn't have too much functionality with the armor. I think there was one where you have, you're wearing the the heavy bomb suit. Yeah. Um, I don't think it really affects any of your stats. I think you can take more bullets for sure. But there's a it's a parasite suit. Yeah. You need cyborg ninja suit. <laughs> um, Let's see. What about what else about Zelda? Like, they just been. I I had it on in the background all day yesterday. Really? Yeah, for like hours. So, I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, one thing that I think is cool to mention is they didn't show any dungeons at all. There are dungeons in the game. Mm. They didn't show them, which I think is cool. I keep that secret. But they did show shrines which are kind of like mini dungeons that are hidden all over the map and they confirmed that there's over a hundred of them wow which that's something i love about zelda games is exploring and finding like the secret like caves and stuff mm -hmm. like wind waker for example in every quadrant of the map there's an island and you can you can play the game and only go to about like a fifth of the islands mm -hmm. There's so many, like, stuff to explore in that game. And that's why, like, near the end of the Wind Waker, when you have all the items, you can just explore. Uh, same thing with Twilight Princess, to an extent. They had a bunch of caves you could explore. That's my favorite parts of Zelda games, is finding all the secret areas. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited that there's shrines everywhere <laughs> hidden. Um, and also, that was something Skyward Sword, I felt, was missing. There wasn't enough, like, stuff to explore. Yeah. It felt like a, a Disney tour. Yeah. I like um, Anuma, I guess. Anuma? Anuma. The creator of the game, the ah. Zelda series, gotcha. hired a bunch of younger developers because he wanted a, to make a new Zelda game. Yeah. That, that's a good way so of doing he, it, So he guess. got a bunch of young developers that, like, see what they would do differently. So right. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. And it then, shows because that game looks, it looks like something new. Right. Um... There's so much new happening with this. It's almost unrecognizable from the rest of the other games. I'm so excited. For yeah, it looks though. great. I, that's a day one purchase. <laughs> I'm so excited <laughs> for the the games. I'm top three games. I'm excited for is well. Okay, top three games. I'm excited for is uh, New Zelda, and then Final Fantasy 15, and then Death Stranding. Mm -hmm. I'm also excited for Persona 5. Yes, they Which, didn't. They just showed the old. I haven't. Again. I haven't seen. Yeah, I don't know if there's anything new they showed. Yeah. The only thing new I heard is demon negotiation <laughs> is back, which is something you could do in Shin Megami Tensei, which is you can like basically like pay off enemies to be like, hey, if I give you this amount of money, will you leave? You can negotiate <laughs> with them. Right. In Shin Megami Tensei, you could. Um, That's how the money works. You could recruit them. And so you could, like, bribe them to join you. Like, hey, oh, if you wow. join me, I'll give you these items. <laughs> um, the world runs on money. Yeah. I'm really excited for New Zelda. Um, Persona, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Shin Megami Tensei for Apocalypse. Whoa. I think that's just me, though, who's excited for that. Because <laughs> um, you haven't played... I haven't played any of them. You haven't... At least play four. That one's... Is that a good starting point? I mean, they all... I don't think they're really connected. Oh, really? They kind of are, but kind of aren't. <laughs> it's kind of like Final Fantasy, how... Like, it's within it, the same... It shares all the demons, mm -hmm. the way Final Fantasy shares all the same enemies, but it's, like, different. I They might be connected. No, they are, I think. I think there's a point in the timeline where it splits, mm -hmm. and that's why there's Persona and Shin Megami Tensei. Persona's, like, a better timeline, and, like, Shin Megami Tensei's, like... A worse one, <laughs> but that I don't know. It's hard because all the Shin Megami Tensei games have multiple endings, depending on how you played it. So like, 
the sequel, Apocalypse, uh-huh. is a sequel to the neutral ending of 4. So it's a sequel to a, a specific ending to 4. Wow. Which I'm lucky, because that's the ending I get. So <laughs> I can just continue where I left off. Right. Um, wow. Speaking of... Uh, recommend that game. Yeah, that's... All right, it's I'll, really check good it. I'll have to check it out. It looks great. I don't know I think why it, I have It's on it. sale now. I'll get it. It goes on sale a lot, because it's an Atlas game. Uh-huh. Um, it's good. I'll have to check it out. It's, uh, do, we, do we even want to talk about uh, Sharp FE really quick, or is there anything to talk oh. about? Oh. That comes out later this month. I think I'll talk about it more. We can save that for later. When I when I get it, because I'm probably going to get it. <laughs> and I can tell you what I think about it. Right, we'll save that for later then. And, um... Yeah, that's Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Hashtag Fire Emblem. <laughs> um, that's what I'm going to call it. Uh, we it's didn't talk about Pokemon, but... <sighs> okay, so... Pokemon uh, just... That all looks the same to me. Pokemon is... And the new one does look fun, but... Yeah. That's because I've played a Pokemon game before. I know how Pokemon work. Yeah, Pokemon is the same every single time. I feel like X and Y was the last big change, because they added a new type, and they had Mega Evolution, so this is the, yeah. the first main entry that's fully 3D. So that's why I played it. But when I played it, it was like, oh, it's Pokemon. <laughs> Going through the motions. Um, This new one, it does look fun. I kind of want to play it, but I know it's just gonna be pokemon again which isn't bad but it isn't i don't think there's much to say i'm not a yeah. huge pokemon fan yeah i should say i don't hate the series though yeah i like them but this new one is like uh, i think i feel about the same pokemon. way um i'm a very casual player <laughs> i guess casual uh, player so yeah I, I played x and y when it came out for the same reasons i think because it, it was uh, it's been so long since i played one too yeah. i should say that was the, the first X one and I Y played. is like there's so many Pokemon I haven't seen because I haven't been caught up with the series. It's gonna feel like so new to me, mm. which kind of did I guess. Yeah, because there's a lot of Pokemon that I thought were new Pokemon, but were actually introduced like years ago that I just never seen. <laughs> but yeah, so like generally okay impressions on Pokemon. I think uh, all around, but like the way that it they had to show it was just like all right, we're gonna spend the entire day talking about Legend of Zelda, the game that we're waiting for. And but first, let's spend an hour. Oh yeah, that's another. Re- <laughs> we were watching it live, and so they show the Zelda trailer, and it's so cool. And it's like, all right, cool. Now we'll get back to Zelda. <laughs> let's talk about Pokemon, a game we've already announced last presentation. For an hour. Yeah, or like forty minutes or something. It felt long. Yeah, it's like oh and then man, I turned like, it off. I, could, I couldn't I was, listen to people being like, like, I I want some more Zelda. <laughs> I, I had to I had to switch channels because I couldn't listen to people being like, oh, ah, to a turn-based game where it's like little <laughs> little animals fighting each other, but they're like, oh man, oh nice it, move. It's Pokemon, you know what it is. Yeah, you don't even need to see a trailer. <laughs> you look at the box and you're like, I know what this is. My uh, my coworker Irving, huge Pokemon fan. Yeah, like competitive Pokemon fan. See competitive stuff, I don't get. Yeah, into. I don't get it because uh, like. <laughs> There's like a whole another way of thinking about the game. I may have told you this already, but it was just like um, we were. I was Irving had just started working where we worked, and like we, were, I, I think I told you this already, yeah. but might as well because it's a fun story, and I like making fun of Irving. Um, <laughs> Irving, I hope you're uh, listening. You better be listening. Yeah, son. Yeah, friendship come, over if you're yeah, not. Yeah, you came into this friendship. You've got a commitment to make. You know what you're getting yourself into. All right, time to make fun of you. All right, <laughs> so <laughs> it was wanna, one. Of th- do you want to do a quick break, actually? Uh, and then we can come back. Yeah, let's just do this really quick one. Just tie off. I gotta go to the bathroom. Oh, okay. I've had to go for a while now. Uh, all right, we're gonna take a quick break. It won't feel like a break to you because it's just gonna cut right back. But uh, we'll we'll finish this story. We'll find some good intermission music for you in a second. Bye. See ya. Okay, welcome back from intermission. Did not I did not anticipate to talk about E3 for an hour and a half, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> we only talked about uh, the first three days of E3 anyway, so like there's still more to there's come. Still more. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, I think that about wraps up the video game section. Yeah, so we could just move on from this point. That was a good cut. Um, you do need to tell me this Irving story, though. Oh, right. Before we so, get any uh, further. This, 
please. So it was one of the first couple of times that I had ever worked with Irving. Uh, I everybody else had worked with Irving a couple of times before me. Irving is one of Mark's co-workers. This was established in part one. Continue. Continue. Oh shit! <laughs> Tripped over. <laughs> Uh, anyway, and um, scene. All right. Um, so uh, my co- podcast is a disaster. <laughs> uh, my other coworkers had told me that Irving was a big Pokemon fan, and I yeah. was like, "Oh, okay, cool. That's a touch point. I played X. Uh, I played X, the first one I've ever played. Um, I can't believe it's the first one you played. I've ever, that was the first one I've ever played. Um, okay, <laughs> that's like three times we said that in a row. That's the first one you've ever played. This is the first one I've ever played." Pokemon X is a game for the Nintendo 3DS. It's also the first one Mark has played. <laughs> we need to move on. Um, I need to let them know. All right. Well, now they know for sure. We gotta wrap up this podcast <laughs> kind of soon, so I'm not letting them finish this story. It's anyway, detrimental. It is not even a good story. <laughs> it's just like uh, I've drummed it up so much, though. Yeah, it's not gonna live up to it. Let's just cut this part. All right. Nope. You better you. You start something, you finish it. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I, I had talked to Irving. This is probably the third time we've ever talked, and I was like, "Oh, hey, so my brother told me that he liked Pokemon." And he was like, "Yeah, I'm like really big fan of Pokemon." Oh, all right, cool. Um, which one's your favorite? <laughs> you know what? To be honest, there are I don't have a favorite. It really doesn't matter. Uh, the stats are the only thing that matters. Oh uh, yeah, you told me that, and I was like, oh. And then and we didn't talk to each other for another hour. It's com- competitive player. Yeah, very competitive. He said he went to conventions to, to fight competitively. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, all right, so now we're going to start talking about things other than video games. All right, that's, this has been our E3 discussion. We still got a few more time, a few more minutes. We're not going to waste it. So uh, we might as well move on to the next <laughs> topic. Um, so, real quick. Okay, so... What uh, have you been watching? Well, uh, I watched a couple of movies recently. Um, the first time I've watched either of these, both of these movies had a lot of hype behind them, and I almost, uh, got, oh, yeah. got to a point where I never wanted to watch these movies because of the hype. Actually, three. I said two, but there are three. Um, they're not even new movies. There's, um, the three movies I'm talking about are, um... Tombstone, okay. Wayne's World, and Zootopia. So Tombstone, great pizza. What did you think of it? Well, it was really good, but weirdly enough, after it's been sitting out for an hour, it's cold. It's still arguably better. Weird. Weird. Pizza does that. Has that effect. It's it really depends on what time of day you eat it, though. Yes. But let's stop talking about pizza and start talking about these movies. All right. Uh, have you seen any of these movies? Wayne's Tombs- World, Tombstone. I've actually never seen any of them. I wanted to see Zootopia when it came out, but yeah, I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, all right, so I'll start with uh, Wayne's World because Wayne's World looked like another Mike Mike Myers, uh, Austin Powers film. It looked like <laughs> all right. I can see where this is coming. He's gonna act silly, and it's, it's just, gonna be silly. It's gonna be a lot of fart jokes. There are zero fart jokes. He's gonna say he's gonna play a, a kid's character and say <laughs> cuss words. It was a uh, cat in the hat. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, so Wayne's World is actually, yeah, I'm sure everyone in the world knows this, but like I did. But Wayne's World was based off an SNL skit. What? It was based off an SNL skit. For those who don't know, SNL stands for Saturday Night Live, a long-running TV show on the uh, national broadcasting channel, otherwise known as. NBC, That's on a long, shush, a long running American channel. Anyway, go on. Anyway, uh, so uh, there are a lot of uh, really fourth wall breaking gags. I think one of the most uh, iconic being like the um, uh, branding uh, gag where they say we're never gonna sell out while eating. Uh, <laughs> Pizza Hut Pizza and the yeah, I, I've down. seen that scene. I love that. I scene. think a lot of people have seen that That's scene. Really funny. Um, there are way more fourth wall breaking jokes than you would expect. Uh, one of the first gags is um, 
they walk into a, uh, a diner with like Wayne he's talking to the camera and then he's like hey and this is uh, John who owns the diner and then the camera <laughs> sticks on John and John starts talking about you never forget the first time you kill a man <laughs> the cold look in his eyes right after the kill and then, and then, like Wayne comes back and like, "Hey, dude, uh, we got the camera. Sorry, we got the camera." Uh, this recommended. So funny. I recommend uh, Wayne's World. Um, I don't. I I think I've just seen parts, but it's one of those movies where every time it's on TV, it's in the middle. Mm. So I mean, if I'm gonna watch a movie, I'm gonna watch it from the beginning. <laughs> the same thing with the Godfather movies. I haven't seen them. Oh, really? But every time I like walked in on like my mom watching it or something, mm-hmm. she's like halfway through it and she's like, "Oh, you want to watch the Godfather with me?" It's like, "Yeah, we're from the beginning." <laughs> um, Tombstone. Tombstone. Moving on to Tombstone. Not the pizza. Everyone who has ever brought this movie up with me has given me the. Uh, you haven't seen Tombstone? You need to get on that. Tombstone, Tombstone, Tombstone. Hey, Mark. Yeah. I haven't seen Tombstone. Yeah, I know. But um, everyone what? else who had ever brought it up, there's so there was so much hype behind this Tombstone movie, I never, ever wanted to see it. When did the movie come out? Uh, the movie came out a long time ago, uh, starring Kurt Russell, Sam Elliott, um, uh, let's see, what's his name? The guy from Aliens who says uh, Game Over Man, Bill Paxton. Um, Bill Paxton. A, a very good, very straightforward Western movie um, about uh, gangs, and it's oh, uh, cool. very good. Uh, Kurt Russell gives a, a an amazing speech halfway through the movie, um, and it's probably one of my favorites. It's uh, <laughs> I'll leave that for you to watch. Okay. Uh, spoiler: It has something to do with thunder. 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 Um, like the it's the ACDC song. Yeah. Reference. Yeah. ACDC was uh, actually there. They played in the saloon. Whoa. Yeah. Thunderstruck. <laughs> uh, so back to the Future Three. <laughs> yeah. Where ZZ Top's just yeah. there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then you watch Zootopia. 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 Yes. I wanted to see, but I'm surprised that you wanted to see it. Um, I mean, I like the animation. Looked cool. I heard it wasn't horrible. <laughs> so which so okay. there wasn't much out before I say anything. Could you, at the time. could you guess what the story's about? Okay, it's, give it's give it a, a shot. Buddy cop movie, mm-hmm. um, starring some animated some animated critters. You got a fox, and you got a bunny, and they gotta stop them. They gotta stop whoever the villain is, and it's like Die Hard, but for kids. Um. Less cussing, <laughs> uh, less blood, probably. Probably. I don't know, but and um, and uh, uh, that's pretty much it. So was I was I close? You were like spot on. Like I think you've actually seen the movie. Oh. Um, okay. <laughs> but anyway, um, as the movie was coming out, they had trailers like tagged on to like every movie that I'd ever seen. But it was always the same trailer. It was with the sloth. The sloth trailer. It. That is the only trailer I've ever seen for this movie. And See, I, that kind of turned me off the movie the first time I saw it, because everyone in the theater was it, laughing it up. It tore everyone's guts out laughing. I was I felt like the only one in the theater. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> it was just like... This is a it's, predictable it's, joke. It's not that funny, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny that I felt that way about the trailer, because I saw that in context, and I thought that scene was really funny. And there's a return it's gag... A, it's a clever scene, but... There, it, it, yeah. It's not that funny. That that gag has a return, and it's ju- it's it, like so funny. Uh, um, <laughs> oh really? It's I thought I would hate that scene in context, and I thought I would hate anything to to do with that sloth. I was wrong in context. That is very funny. Um, so sloth, you would recommend the sloth? I recommend the sloth. All right. Tombstone I rec- recommended. recommended. <laughs> uh, Wayne's World recommended. Mm-hmm. And uh, sloth confirmed. We got sloth on deck. Sloth on deck. Um, uh, so that's all the movies. You well, I wanted to. Say, oh just yeah. One last thing about Zootopia. Um, this movie really tackled some undertones, really? like heavy duty undertones. Um, <laughs> this uh, came out in a time where uh, Ferguson had just happened. Oh. Okay. Uh, like, n- like maybe not immediately, but like definitely 
soon after. Yeah. Uh, this movie tackles like r- m- race relations really? in the modern world. Who's this movie for? That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> it's like I didn't. I like I said, I knew nothing other than the sloth scene going in. I didn't know what the plot was, and to find out like soon in the movie that it's kind of a, like got the undertone of like race relations and like viewpoints of like police yeah it's like wow this movie is um like very metaphoric and it's like i mean even very in the well written trailer they kind of make a sex joke in the trailer they do so i don't know this kids movies these days <laughs> am i right i highly recommend <laughs> all three of those movies all right cool yeah um I haven't watched anything <laughs> uh, except for the JoJo anime. Mm-hmm. I don't think we should get into that this episode. Okay. Because we'll, I know for sure we will talk about JoJo for probably 20, 30 minutes. <laughs> this podcast would go this over podca- two hours. This podcast, we're trying to keep it within two hours, you know. <laughs> we give didn't or, Give plan. or take a few. We I really didn't think we'd talk about E3 that much, but we, <laughs> we made, we didn't, Every time we would bring it up, it'd be like, "All right, we'll save this for the podcast, though." <laughs> and right, we've been There's saving, a real release been now, saving up a lot. Yeah, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Next episode, what are some things you can expect? We'll talk about games we've been playing. Yeah, probably. We didn't really have time to talk about that. The convention that we'll go to this this weekend. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about. You wanted to recommend some anime. We, yeah, we could talk about anime next episode. Next episode, gonna be more anime confirmed. Like, 100% more anime. Um, one thing I wanted to start, haven't really... Oh, yes. Um, you mentioned this. Was um, playing every week, or whenever, I don't know. There's no schedule yet for when this podcast <laughs> will go up. I'm thinking maybe every two or three weeks, but uh, I don't know. We'll see... Um, but one thing I wanted to do is, in between episodes, we could both play a game we haven't played before, so that we can talk about it on the show. Mm. Um, I haven't, <laughs> we or we haven't decided which game yet. I thought of this just now. Um, maybe that could like tie in, like we could have some way of randomizing whether or not it'll be a game, yeah, or maybe an anime, like the first three episodes of an anime that we neither of us have ever yeah. seen. Yeah, I mean. Or a movie. A lot of possibilities. Yeah, I think that. uh, Did you did you plan that whenever you came up with Mystery Box? Because that that ties in with like the name so well, where it's just like (laughs) we don't know anything about whatever we're gonna do, but we're gonna talk about it. That's why the that's why it works so well. That's like like poetry. Mystery Box. I couldn't decide on a damn name. Call it miss. It's a mystery. I'll figure it out later. (laughs) That's a slogan. All right, so now you have uh, an idea of what we're going to be doing. So um, yeah. Should we just randomly choose something right now? To No, uh, I'll think about it more. All right. I wanted to have a game ready so you could play along at home, mm. but uh, that's not going to happen this week. <laughs> <laughs> but next episode, I'm sure we'll talk about whatever game yeah, or so. movie or whatever. Um, so next podcast, you can look forward to uh, recommendations. Uh, this little mystery game that we're coming up with, we'll come up with a way to randomize it. Yeah. And um, we'll talk probably about- like an hour, hour and a half, maybe not two hours. Um, <laughs> Five hour JoJo cast. <laughs> we're gonna start from part one. Yeah, we're gonna watch every um, single episode with you. With with we're gonna have a little audio commentary track you can play along we don't know how twitch works so we're gonna do it this way i don't know how to stream so (laughs) i'm gonna distribute these tapes (laughs) um you uh well uh i hope you don't know how to end this train wreck (laughs) (laughs) no um uh you can follow us on facebook um you can't follow us on twitter because i haven't set it up yet as of recording, <laughs> maybe it'll be in the description. We were just too excited to up. record. We just had to get it going. But we, you can follow us, Mystery Box, on Facebook. That'd probably be the best way to keep track of whenever the new episodes are coming up. Um, and then as soon as we get Twitter up, we'll let you know. Um, and yeah, yeah uh, thanks for listening. Um, if you made it this far, congratulations, because <laughs> you've been through a lot. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening to our first episode. Uh, please let us know what you liked, what you didn't like. Yeah, we'll make changes or we won't. 
Don't ask me for anything. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, feedback is appreciated. Uh, that 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 about concludes. That about concludes mystery box. Uh, right. If you have any any last thoughts, go ahead, go ahead and hmm. go ahead and uh, a lot of pressure on this one. Go ahead and let them know. Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Buy stock, buy stock, sell high, buy low. Kojima games, Kojima games, Kojima games. Good night. <laughs>